morning and welcome to Bridge City First Assembly and those of you who are watching online, we're glad that you're with us as well. Thanks so much for joining us. We're glad that you're here and I hope that you have had a good week. Hope, in fact, I hope you had a great week. But uh, we know this by putting the Lord first. Uh, this week hopefully will go even better and we believe that it will. But uh, we're so glad that you've joined us today. Believe God's going to speak to our hearts and our lives. Believe He's going to do something special in each one of us. Uh, that's what I've come prayerfully hoping for myself and for you. And so as we enter in and we worship him together, we believe that he's going to meet us right here. He's going to connect with us and our needs are going to be met. Amen.
If you agree with that prayer, say, that's what I want. Amen. Boudreaux and Thibodeau were dragging a deer that they had shot and killed. Uh, and they were they were dragging it along, and its antlers kept, it was a buck, it kept antlers kept get, uh, gouging into the dirt and catching, and they were having a hard time. And this other hunter walks up to him and says, Hey, you know, if you would drag that deer the other way, you wouldn't have so much problems with it. Boudreaux and Timothy looked at each other and said, Hey, this guy's pretty smart. Maybe we should try it. And so they did. They started dragging. After a while, Boudreaux looks at Timothy and says, Hey, man, you know, that guy was right. This is a lot easier dragging the deer the other way. And, he's, and Timothy looks back at it and says, Yeah, but we're getting farther and farther from the truck. <laughs> If you didn't like that one, you can thank my mother-in-law who's watching the video. I told her, she's so, it's so bad. She's so sweet and kind and loving and helpful. I never get to mess with her about anything. It's just not fair, but anyway. Uh, I want to point our attention to a truth this morning, uh, and it is this. God is the God of the valleys as well as the mountaintops. God is the God of the valleys as well as the God of the mountaintops. Why don't you, if you've got your Bible with you, maybe you've got your hard copy version or you've got your electronic version and you would go to 1 Kings chapter 20. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we ask for you to help us to see your word, help us to understand your word, help us to receive it, accept it, and apply it to our lives. Lord, that when we walk out of here, we will have a different sense of how life is going to be because we know that you are with us. We know you're with us. No matter how low the valley, you're with us. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're the God of the valleys. Now, would you help me by the power of your Holy Spirit? Would you hide me behind you, Jesus, and may you be seen and heard more than me? And we thank you. We ask it in your name. Amen. At 282 feet below sea level, Death Valley is the lowest, hottest, driest location in the North America. Standing in that valley, you can look out across, and there is at the edge of that valley Telescope Peak. It's a mountain which rises up from the valley, and it rises up to a height of more than 11,000 feet above sea level. It, it is standing in stark contradiction, seeing that mountain that is more than two miles high when you are uh, about a football field below sea level, makes you think, man, that thing is massive, that is huge, makes you feel even lower than you were before you saw the mountain. But by comparison, Death Valley is really not that deep. In fact, on the list of the top 10 lowest places on the earth, Death Valley in California ranks only seventh. Would you like to know what the number one place is? You've been there, Scott. And Brenda, you've been there. And I've been there. Because the lowest dry land spot on this earth is the Dead Sea shore, and the Dead Sea sits between Israel and Jordan. And the Dead Sea shore is 1,388 feet below sea level. That is more than 1,100 feet lower than Death Valley. And let me give you a little perspective. That's like taking four and a half football fields, standing them up on their ends and stacking them on top of each other, and that's how much lower the Dead Sea Shore is than Death Valley. Interestingly, 
You've also been to the second lowest place. Scott, you didn't know this, did you? You've been to the second lowest place on earth because straight up the Jordan Rift, where the Jordan River runs, it runs up to the Sea of Galilee, and that's the second lowest place on earth on dry land. And it's 702 feet below sea level. That is more than double the depth of Death Valley. Now you've had your history and geography and science lesson for the day. But how many of you know there are places in our lives that we get to where we feel even lower than any of those valleys? We come into our own valleys in life, and no matter how deep those physical valleys are that we've been talking about, there are times when we feel like, I am lower than Death Valley. I am lower than the valley in the Sea of Galilee. I'm lower than the valley where, de uh, where the Dead Sea is. It's when we're times when we're at our lowest, times when we're broken, times when we're lonely, when we're weary, when life is dull and empty. And those valleys can seem so deep sometimes. Sometimes we are in those valleys and it, it's like we're looking up at Telescope Peak from Death Valley and we're going, man, I remember how good it was for a while when I was up on that mountaintop. I remember when I was up there and how great it was. But now I'm down here and this stinks. This is not real good. I don't like this right here. I want to get out of this. I want to be up there again. And those valleys can make us feel so dry, so drained, so discouraged. And we wonder, would I ever get up to the mountaintop again? And it's in those times when we are in the valleys that the enemy does his best to try to attack us and destroy us. He thinks, if I could catch him in the valley. If I could just catch them in the valley when they're down, when they're lower than normal, when they're hurting, when they're lonely, when they're broken, when life seems to be falling apart, when they're ashamed or discouraged, I got a better chance of taking them out. And so when he sees one of us in a valley situation, he says, aha, I got them now. I got them now. That's exactly what happened to God's people. In 1 Kings chapter 20, in 1 Kings chapter 20, you've got a divided nation. You've got Judah in the south and you've got Israel in the north. And Ahab is the king of Israel at the time. And we all, if you study scripture at all, you understand Ahab's not a good guy. I'm going to come back to that at the end of the message. Can you just tuck that in your pocket for a minute that we're going to come back to the fact that Ahab was not a good guy. But set that aside for the moment because these are still God's people. And you've got Ben-Hadad, who is the king of Syria to the northeast. So if you're, you're looking up there, sorry, I don't, let me, let me, I don't want to you know, make you look at my back there on the video. But anyway, if you're, I guess I don't want y'all to look at my back either. Okay, so I'm going to do it like this. So if you're looking at Israel up here to the northeast, you've got Syria. And the king of Syria decides, Ben-Hadad decides, I'm going to go down, I'm going to put the whoop on Israel. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to tear them up and take them over. That's what I'm going to do. And so he goes to the capital of Israel that at that time is Samaria. That's where King Ahab has set up his government. He's in the town of Samaria. The town of Samaria happens to be in a hilly area, a hill country kind of area. Hill country, Dave. Doesn't that sound good? A uh, hill country, yeah. And so uh, it's kind of this hilly area, mountainous area. And so they come and they attack the Israelites in this mountainous area. But God comes to the rescue of his people and they put the whoop on Ben-Hadad and his army and they send them running off. Yay! Everybody cheer. Let's all cheer right now. Let's all clap. Go ahead, clap, clap, cheer. Woo! Yeah. Right? The enemy is sent running off. It's a great thing. But they get back together and they talk amongst themselves and they think they've got it figured out. They decide they're going to come back and they're going to attack God's people. And this is what the military commanders said to their king, Ben-Hadad. After their defeat, Ben-Hadad's officers said to him, the Israelite gods are gods of the hills. That is why they won. 
But we can eat, beat them easily on the plains, or some would say, some of the translations would say, in the valleys. You see, they, they thought that the Israelites' God was like one of their gods. And their gods were geographic kind of gods. So if they went to the sea and they needed to be blessed as they went out on the sea, they would worship the sea god. If they needed help in the mountains hunting animals, they would pray to the mountain gods. If they needed rain, they would pray to the rain gods. And they said, wait a minute. You know what the Israelites got? They got themselves a God who's a God of the mountains. If we could just lure them down into the valley. Aha, we got a valley God and we could beat them there. That's where we, we could really put the what Because see, they were better fighters uh, from chariots and horses. And they could maneuver those better in the valleys. And that's what they said. Man, if we could just do that, we're going we're gonna to get them there. And of course... You know, of course Israel won they were, when they were in the mountains. But man, come on, Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad thinks it over. He says, okay, all right, I think that's a good plan. Let's try it. Let's try it. Because anyone can win on the mountaintop, right? Anyone can win on the mountaintop. Can't you win on the mountaintop? I can. I mean, mountaintop, you know, when all the bills are paid. When your marriage is doing great, full of bliss. Heard somebody say one time that they had been married for uh, for 25 years and they've been happily married for two. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a bummer. But come on, when you when when your marriage is good, and hey, when your kids are behaving and getting good grades, thank you, Jesus. Right? When your neighbors are being nice to you, they're not even playing their music too loud or anything. I mean, like, come on, this is, this is, when you're on the mountaintop, anybody can be a winner, right? It's easy to praise God when you're on the, oh, life is good, man. You know, when you got, when you got a little extra money in your wallet that you can give, you know, and you're going, wow, man, I, of course you can win. I mean, we all feel strong and confident when we're on the mountaintop. We, we feel like we can whoop the world when we're on the mountaintop. That's what the devil said one day to, to God. God, uh, the devil had come to visit God. I don't know how that works. I don't understand all that. That's too much. That's beyond my pay grade, okay? So I, don't, I just take what the Bible says at face value, and I believe it. And that's what happened, is the devil came to see God. And God said to the devil, hey, have you seen my boy Job? He said, well, yeah, I've seen him. And he said, he's pretty good, isn't he? I mean, Job's got it together. Job has got it going on. I mean, devil, you got to admit, that guy is slamming. He is rocking this thing. He has got this. That guy loves me. That guy worships me. That guy, <laughs> devil, of course he, of course he does. Of course he does, God. I mean, he's on the mountaintop. I mean, guy's filthy rich. Got this awesome family. You get him all these kids. He loves them. And, and, and man, they have a great time. And, and man, everything's good. He's got friends. He's, got, he's, he's healthy. Anybody would worship you, God, if, if you gave them that. I mean, if I gave them that, they would worship me. So tell you what, God, if you really want to see if he's going to be that as great as you think he is, I tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't you let me uh, attack him and let's see how much he worships you. And God says, well, you can take away his wealth, but that's it. And so the devil comes and takes away his, his wealth. Job still worships the Lord. The devil comes back and says, God, you know what the deal is? I mean, he's still got the things that are really important in life. He's still got his family. He's still got his health, you know. He, he's still doing okay. He's still pretty much on the mountaintop. But if you would let me impact him some more, I believe we can turn this story around. God says, no way, it's not going to happen. But you can go ahead and try. In fact, I'll let you take what? I'll let you take away his family. And so he takes away all of Job's kids. By now, Job's wife is bitter. The devil says, I, I think we'll just leave her. <laughs> this might work to my advantage. 
I'm not putting women down. I'm just saying that's the way it happened in that story, okay? Sure. <laughs> For those watching on video, somebody said, sure. <laughs> Job still worships. Devil goes back and says, you know, the problem is, he's still on the mountaintop in his health. God says, okay. You can take away his health, but you can't kill him. You know, it's a tough road for Job there. His friends kind of turn on him. His wife turns on him. He's got no wealth. He's got no family really anymore standing alongside him. His health is gone. But he says, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to keep on worshiping him. Job understood something. That even though the devil tries to attack you in the valleys, you can still put your focus on God. Anyone can win on the mountain, yes. But can you win in the valley is the question. And Job discovered you can win in the valley. So what the Israelites were about to find out because sometimes when you're down in a valley, you, you lose a job or you lose a friend, you fail at a relationship or you fail at a dream that you had, you suffer rejection or you suffer heartache. It's hard. It's hard to really believe that you're going to be able to come through this. It's like being down in Death Valley, 288 feet below, excuse me, 282 feet below sea level, looking up. At Telescope Peak, 11,000 feet, plus you're 282 feet away, and going, I don't know if I could ever be back there again. I desperately want to, but I don't know if I can. And the enemy will attack you when you are at your lowest and at your driest, and you're like, wow, I am so glad I crawled out of bed and came to church today to listen to this message, Pastor. Thank you for telling me that I'm going to be in a valley and the devil's going to attack me. Yay! I'm happy, happy, happy. <laughs> the message isn't over. <laughs> Give me a chance to get there. He'll attack you at your lowest. Your lowest, your lowest spot where you can't really be at your best. He will be, attack you at your lowest emotionally. When your marriage is struggling, when your kids aren't living right, when someone you trusted turns their back on you. He will hit you at your lowest mentally when you can't seem to focus, when you seem worn down by new challenges and, and, and you feel stressed and you're bombarded by so many things and he hits you at your lowest mentally and he hits you at your lowest physically when you are sick and when you are not sleeping well and when you are fatigued and when you are out of shape and he says, aha, I got him in the valley. Now's my chance. And so many people, he tries to take them out when they're in a valley time. It's their lowest, but it's also their driest. Man, you can be dry spiritually in a valley, can't you? Have you ever, okay, can I just, if you've ever been dry in a valley, spiritually speaking, would you raise your hand so I do not feel alone? Thank you. Thank you. I feel better for those of you that are watching. A bunch of people raise their hands. It wasn't just me. I feel better. But when you seem like, you come to church and it's dull. You say things like, eh, I didn't really like the worship today. Or you go to pray and it feels like you pray and your, your prayers get about as far as that ceiling and they hit and drop back down and you can't hear anything from God. Anybody? Or you open the word, expecting something to jump off at the pages at you and give you an answer. And it is just as flat as can be to you. We get dry spiritually sometimes. Get in that valley and we're dry. 
And the devil goes, uh huh. Now's my chance. Now's my chance. Or, or we get dry relationally. We, we're like, man, you know what? We don't have any new friends. Our relationships are stale. People have let us down. And the very thing that we need to do is move toward people who could help us and lift us up and help us get through that time. But the very thing that we need to do, we don't do and we push away. And the devil goes, uh-huh. They're like one of those little antelope out in Africa. And the predator weans them off by themselves. Feels like they can take them out. And when we get at our lowest and at our driest, that's when the devil decides, I got them now. And that's when the enemy thinks he has the best chance to beat us. And it can be unless we remember this one thing. Are you ready? You may look outnumbered. You may look outgunned. You may look like you're all alone, but you've got God. Amen. Look at somebody right now and say, I've got God. <laughs> look at somebody else that you didn't look at the first time because you didn't want to look at them, and now you've got to look at them and say, <laughs> I've got God. You see, in the Amplified Version of Scripture, 1 Kings 20, verse 27 says, The Israelites camp before the enemy like two little flocks of goats. And I love this. The Amplified adds a better, full understanding of what the, the translated word would mean in the Greek or the Hebrew. In this case, it's Hebrew. And so it adds the fuller expansion of the definition of what the words really meant. And it said, like two little flocks of goats with everything against them except God. And the Arameans filled the country. I mean, it looked like they were about to be decimated. It looked like they were about to be destroyed. They are down in the valley, and it says they look like two little flocks of goats. And all around them, everywhere else in the valley, is the enemy. And the enemy's about to pounce. The enemy's going, we got them now. We brought them down into the valley. They don't have a God here. And it looks like they're going to... But what that enemy didn't see was those two words that the Amplified gave us. Everything was against them except God. What the enemy didn't know was that their God is the God of the valley as well as the God of the mountains. Because he created it all. And he owns it all. And he rules it all. He's not limited geographically. He's not limited financially. He's not limited informationally. He's not limited strategically. They thought they had outnumbered, outmaneuvered, outgunned God's people. But well, what they failed to fail realize is that God's people always have the home field advantage because our God doesn't do anything but win. We sang it earlier. My God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. My God never fails. Never fails. Those valley moments, we got to know God is there with us. It's what David knew. Do you know where he fought Goliath? Oh, yeah. Somebody gonna preach with me and I'm gonna get excited right here. <laughs> in the valley. He fought in the valley. Goliath stood out there in the valley day after day and said, send me your strongest and your best. But the strongest and the best didn't go out into the valley. The Israelites were camped on one mountaintop. The Philistines were camped on another mountaintop. But the battle was going to take place in the valley. And if you wanted to win, you had to go into the valley to win. David shows up. He's just being Uber Eats, DoorDash. He's just showing up with food from Dad. Checking on the battle. See what's going on. How my brother's doing. Here's some food. Give your commander some so that you stay in good graces. And he treats you right. Doesn't put you on the front lines. And, and David hears Goliath come out and challenge everybody. He goes, hey, who's going out to challenge that guy? He says, ain't nobody going out there, bro. You go out there, you'll die. He said, die? Who's our Mary all in? Our God doesn't do anything but win, baby. He said, 
said, I'll go take it. And he does. He eventually gets out there onto the field. But do you know what he says? He comes out there and Goliath's like, fee, fi, fo, fum. He doesn't really say that. That's not in the Bible. It just sounded good. Anyway, he's got a massive spear and a massive sword and massive armor. And he's got a, a whole guy who his whole job is just to carry his big shield because it's too much to carry all that stuff. And he's like almost twice David's height. And he comes out there and says, I will feed your carcass to the birds today. The dogs will drink your blood. I mean, this is kind of, you know, this is, this is smack talk back in that day and time. And he comes out and David says, what? I come against you in the name of the Lord. In other words, you misunderstand. You must think that my God is only with me when I'm on the mountaintop watching the sheep. Brother, you fail to understand something. Right here in this valley, with all I got is this sling and this stone, you, my friend, are the one that's outnumbered. You, my friend, are the one that is outgunned. You are the one that is outmaneuvered, and you're about to go down. And he hummed that rock at that dude's head, and it knocked him to the ground. And he picked up that boy's big old sword that he could probably barely handle himself, and he cut his head off. And then he held it up and said, check it. My God never loses. That's graphic, isn't it? <laughs> you see, today you may think you don't match up because you're in a valley season and you're low and you're dry and you're weak and you're weary and you're tired. And it's okay. It's not about you. It's not about you. It is not about you. It is not about you. How many times do I need to say this till somebody gets it? It is not about you. Remember I said that earlier I would come back to this close to the end and we're close to the end and you're like, hey. Anyway, Ahab was a wicked king. It says he did more evil in the sight of the Lord than any of the other kings before him. There was no reason for God to be good to those people at that time. They were wicked. But God doesn't change. And it doesn't matter how messed up we are. And it doesn't matter how imperfect we are. And it doesn't matter how when we get down in that valley and it hurts and it stinks and we hate it and we're tired and we're weary and we don't get everything right. And we're maybe not praising him to the full extent that we should. And we're maybe not reading the Bible as much as we should. And we're not praying as much. Aren't you glad that it's not about you? It's about the fact that the God who's with you on the mountaintop is also the God who is with you in the valley. And I'm telling you today that no matter what valley you are in, or no matter how deep you are down in it, you are not alone. Yeah. God of the mountaintop is also the God of the valley. And you may have walked into this building or tuned in online today and you are in a valley in life. You may have lost your job. You may have lost your best friend. Your health may have taken a turn for the worse. Your vehicle may have broken down. Your kids may have let you down. Do not let the enemy fool you just because he's got you down in a valley doesn't mean he's got you down for the count. Stay faithful to God. Find a song of worship that you can sing even when you don't feel it. Find something to be grateful for and give God thanks for even though it seems minor. Bless someone else even though you're the one in need of being blessed. Serve someone else even though they don't deserve it. Remember that God is the God of the valley just as much as he's the God of the mountain. And if you will hold on to that, he will hold on to you. And he will come and he will defend you and he will protect you and he will fight for you just like you did the Israelites in 1 Kings 20 because even though they weren't perfect God said I'm going to take care of my people and he came to their rescue and guess what they put the whoop on Ben, De ben Hadad and the guys from Syria again and ran them off and then they knew too those people over in Israel they got a God who's a God everywhere they got a God who's in charge everywhere they got a God who can win every time they got a God who will always look out for them 
If you'll remain faithful to him, believing in him, believing in him for him to come through for you in the valley, trusting that he's going to come through, I'll just believe and declare with all that is in me today that you will come up out of that valley blessed You'll come out victorious. You'll come out strengthened. You'll come out encouraged. You'll come out emboldened. You'll come out an overcomer, a winner, a champion in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you receive that this morning? Yes. 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 Scott, you can come if you would. <clears throat> And it is easy to get in valleys. And I was tempted. I, I've had plenty of little valley experiences in life. I was tempted to give you lots of little stories from my life. But the truth is, you got your own stories, don't you? You got your own stories. You have your own valleys. And sometimes it's encouraging to hear somebody else's story, to hear that, oh, well, I'm glad to know that they go through valleys too. Well, I do, if that helps you. And if you need a list of stories, I could stand here and bellyache about them all day for you, okay? <laughs> but I'd rather tell you what I learned in the valleys. And it's that the God who was with me on the mountaintop when everything was awesome is the God who's with me in the valley. And he'll fight for me. And he'll fight for you. And he'll win for you. Amen. You'll get back to that mountaintop one day. But even if you didn't right away, you're not alone. He's with you. He's with you. Can I pray for you? That'd be okay. And let's do this. There are times when I preach a, a message I believe it's for the whole church and I obviously believe I probably wouldn't share it if it wasn't for the whole church but there are times when in my heart I sense the Lord just saying is somebody very specific or somebody in particular that needed that message there's times when I'm preparing and I sense it there's times when I don't sense it till I'm in the midst of it and it's not because I look out and I see you responding. I try to not let that stuff cloud my judgment. I try to just let the Lord give guidance and wisdom. And I, I just know, I feel like it's more than one, but today that, and, and even though I've, I've spoken in some generality, so I get that, and this could apply to a lot of things, but I just feel like specifically there's somebody who came today and boy you've been in a deep valley like death valley or like or like the dead sea or like the shore of galilee where it's just down there man and probably you came today needing a word from the lord you, you're like dude if, if somebody doesn't say something today i don't know how i'm gonna hang in there and maybe nobody has walked up to you because we've been social distancing and whispered in your ear and said, hey, I just wanted you to know God's with you. He's going to carry you through this. But can I just tell you, this is your moment. If you were waiting for God to say to you through somebody, hey, I'm with you. It's going to be okay. I'm going to carry you. I'm going to fight for you. You're going to come out of this. I know it looks dark and deep and bad right now, but I'm going to carry you. Hey, listen. This is me Stay, trying to be that person right now. And as the Holy Spirit leads, be as straightforward with you and say, here's your sign. Here is your neon sign flashing, saying, God is speaking to you. Hang in there. Don't give up. His word says he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Never. That's a pretty strong word. Only a forever God can keep a never statement. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't hang on how good or bad you are. So he's like, I can just live however I want, huh? I don't think that's the way you would treat a God who would 
who would love you like that and be there for you. But if that's you today, could I just ask you to say, I don't know, it's me. I needed that word from the Lord. I needed that confirmation. And I've been going through a valley. And this message, it was spot on for my life today. And that is what I had to have. And I thought, would you just stand right now where you're at? I'm not going to call you out or anything like that. But if you just stand, that would I want to give you a moment to respond. And I believe the Lord's going to meet you in the valley right now. So that's you. I'll give you, I'll count to three. I'll make it easy, all right, so that you know when to move. One, two, three. You just stand right now. Anybody? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? Give me a chance. You hanging on? White knuckling? It's your moment. Just stay. be bold. The Lord's going to meet you there. Maybe if you're watching online, we can't see you, but that doesn't matter if I can see you or not. So matters that God sees you and he's with you. You're standing with this as it stood here today. Right where you're at, go ahead and stand in your house or wherever you're watching. If you're driving, don't. But we're going to pray. Can I just tell you, he knows you're right where you're at. Doesn't matter how bad it looks. Doesn't matter how dark it looks. Doesn't matter how hopeless it looks. It doesn't matter if it looks like there's no way for this to be fixed at all, it, 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 you say, that's just impossible. He is the God of the impossible. And he will walk with you through this time. So if it's hard, and it can be hard sometimes, just know you don't have to go through it alone. He's with you. And there's a whole bunch of people here that love you and walk through it with you too. We're going to pray right now, okay? Especially for you and for those that are watching that are responding. We could just pray together right now. Maybe you didn't even stand, but you needed to. But we're going to pray right now for you too. Lord, we love you and we thank you that we can always come to you. We love you so much. And Lord, when we get to these moments in life, these valley moments, it is just so crazy hard to see our way out to feel like we're going to be able to overcome this. Thank you that you come to the valley with us. You don't leave us alone, but you stand with us. You walk with us. You fight for us. You surround us and protect us and defend us. Thank you that we can count on you today. Lord, when we feel broken, when we feel tired, when we feel lonely, when we feel discouraged, when we feel weary, Nothing seems to be working right. Meet us in the valley. Father, I thank you that you're the God of the valley as well as the mountaintop. You own it all. God, even now, make yourself known in a special way to these that are responding. In a special way, a unique way for them. We give you thanks and praise. We trust you. While nobody's looking around today, could I just take a moment and just say that one of the worst feeling valleys is when you know you're not right with God, but you want to be right with God, but you're like, I just can't do it on my own. Listen, you know, it's not about you. I said that earlier. God comes to our rescue. He died in our place. He sent his son, Jesus, to come to this earth. He lived a life as a common person so everybody could relate to him. He died a sacrificial death. and He took my place and your place, and he paid for the, our crimes against God, took our punishment, and let us go free. Not only that, he rose from the dead. And he's alive right now, and he's praying for you and me. And if you're not right with God, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online, can I just say to you, I just say, he'll forgive any wrongs and you can start fresh and new. And so while nobody's looking around today, if you need to get right with God, would you just pop that hand up in the air and put it right back down? We're going to pray a quick prayer here and then we're going to be finished today. Anybody, you need to get right with God. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else you need to get right with God? Yeah. Yeah. This is your moment. This is your moment. Anybody else? Would you pray this simple prayer with us? And maybe we'll all pray it together. Why don't you just pray it and we'll encourage those as we pray along with them. Dear God, I blew it. 
I have messed things up royally. I've sinned. But I don't want to live that way anymore. I thank you that you paid my price. So I can be forgiven. And I can be free. And I accept that free gift today. Of salvation. Now I'm right with you. Because you said so. And I'm going to live to honor you with your help. Thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Realize scripture says if you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, you are right with God. The slate has been wiped clean. You are whole. You are complete. You are a child of God. You've got rights and privileges that go along with that. That is awesome. If you need help walking this out, we would be thrilled to help you. I think I'm actually out of copies of our book, that I, my devotional book I usually give people and try to get in their hands, but uh, we'll try to get some. And, and it, we just want to walk alongside you during this time as you grow in your relationship with God and connect with Him. And if you're watching online and you need to, you've just given your life to the Lord, would you please respond below and let us know? And we'll be happy to reach out to you and connect and help you as well. And we thank you so much. Listen, I love you guys. I am so glad you came today. How many of you are glad that we serve a God of the valleys and not just the mountaintops? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to speak God's blessing over you as we get ready to go. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and may he give you peace. May he surround you and protect you as you go this week, giving you health and strength and energy and life. May you be blessed when you go in and blessed when you come out. May you be blessed when you get up in the morning and blessed when you go to bed at night. I pray his blessing over you every which way there is for me to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of the week. We will see you next Sunday. Don't forget, you can watch the Wednesday night Bible study online at YouTube. And we'll put the link in the Facebook page as well. God bless you. Have a great week.